Epoxy is like a riot. It feeds off each other. But once you get it all by itself, it's a lot more reasonable. Previously on Sailing Adrift, we got down and dirty with this old water tank and totally transformed it into this masterpiece. Then we sealed it up, claimed victory, and had ourselves a little dance party. Now it's on to the next. Time to wire up the windlass. So we need some electrical conduit. This is basically electrical conduit made of PVC. And this is the cable we'll need for our windlass. Those two guys fit in there pretty darn easily, especially if you factor in the fact that I've got a connector on the tip of this one. So if these can fit in here, they'll get one, and they can even have a few buddies. Quite a bit of wires can go through there. I'm trying to decide how many of these runs we'll actually need. That's no problem at all. We can get a bunch more of that. So great, we're gonna use this as an easy way to pass wires through to the front of the boat. This guy needs these beefy suckers on the outside. And then this one is going to be the switch uh, that we're going to put at the helm for this through the relay or the uh, solenoid. And then this one that's laying on the ground, I'm just pulling in a little ways because it's going to be the uh, switch control for the washdown pump that we have up here. But the pump itself will be, you know, down there. Step one is to feed it all through this guy. This is the lead twine for future wiring. Hopefully my tape job holds. Okay, so there's the start. I'm gonna go down to the cabin. If you could just like gently feed that through. Sure. So it's clear of everything. It's not funky. Like once you start pulling it, it'll be clear. Okay. I think. Is it feeding? Yeah. Good. Hold on, we're almost there. I got a bit of a hang up. Okay. <laughs> Oops, well not here. There, that looks better. Okay, you probably shouldn't have to do much. So we split this one off. This one is gonna end up behind the lid. We'll just install it right along this edge and then tab it in place so it'll live behind it. And then it comes around here following this wash down line and then goes through here and will eventually tie it into this pump and its configuration. All these will stay together and go clear back to the pilot house. Back there, right there, is the back side of the electrical panel. Okay, here's the kind of like the last little part of this. Hold on for me, Michael. Do that tug. We did it. Okay, would you walk it over to that bowl and just kind of push all those wires through? Sure. And then we'll temporarily set it right here. And there we have it, an electrical conduit. We did end up securing it to the hole with these sweet little fiberglass tabs. See my little tabs? Mm -hmm. Nice tab action there. I don't know about that. Okay, function. I definitely do. And then on this side, that'll come out and go behind this wall because behind that wall will be this, which will eventually be the electrical panel. We've done it. <laughs> Perfect timing. Hey, Greg. Yes? Guess what? What? We got another patron. What? Yeah, his name is Lou. Lou? Welcome aboard, Lou. Glad to have you. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. It's unexpected. That's really, really cool. A solenoid is an electric output device that converts electrical energy into a linear mechanical force. So this came in the mail today, and uh, I thought it'd be a great opportunity for us to talk about what the heck it is and what it does in the boat. I had to do all this research on my own to kind of find this out. Uh, so hopefully this gives someone some benefit. This is a solenoid, and this solenoid will live 
in this waterproof box up in the forward hatch of the boat. Uh, its purpose is to operate the windlass. So this is a solenoid and this is a relay. They do very similar things. This thing's just a little bit more complex and beefy than this is. I don't really know where they cross over, but I can tell you the way I'm using these relays, they can handle up to 40 amps and they are a one-way device. Whereas this solenoid is a little bit more complex. It's a two-way solenoid and it handles a lot higher amperage. This one in particular can handle up to 150 amps continuous, meaning like sustained power draw or like a 200 amp spike. When a signal comes in, it creates a connection that allows for a higher amperage draw. And this sounds a little technical, but what it really boils down to is it allows you to use a small little weak switch to operate something that's a little bit more beefy. In the case of this, this little switch right here, which is just your basic toggle switch with a waterproof cover, will be able to operate the washdown pump, <clears throat> which draws about 15 amps. This thing is rated for five amps. So a signal comes into this through a little wire and says, go ahead and turn, your, turn, turn yourself on. And then the beefy wires send the juice to the large draw appliance, which in this case would be the washdown pump. This is one of those on steroids. So for the windlass, we'll connect up over here, down over here, and the power source in the middle. So the power comes in and just hangs out, nothing happens. But when something signals it to go up, it closes the connection here. And when something signals it to go down, it closes the connection over here. But anyway, pretty cool. And then down here is where you attach your power source and then your signals for both. So uh, you'll have a wire that comes out to here to your switch. It can be a foot switch on the front of your boat. It can be a toggle switch, just like this one. On the box here but probably will be controlled at our helm or it can be a remote switch like this one we're gonna have two I didn't want to have the foot switches that seems to be the most common what we're gonna do is we're gonna in the in the pilot house have a two-way switch so we can go let it'll stay in the middle and then left will be down right will be up or we'll have it so you can have one of these little legs. So basically be able to sit there and push up for up, down for down, and control the windlass from wherever you need to. I would assume Kelly and I will be working as a team for the vast majority of our anchoring. So we'll probably be using hand signals and the one in the pilot house for the most part. What else do we want to talk about? I mean, that's pretty much it. Pretty cool. Pretty neat. Pretty expensive. So the next thing what we have to do is wire this up, mount it inside here, and really the switch will live in here, and then one other thing. Oh, the controller box. This little guy that'll work with this to control the windlass as well. So, we've got the wires already run. Let's go up there and uh, see about installing all of this. Which reminds me, it needs a wall to be mounted to. Okay, we got our basic shape. We just need to cut that out. And then um, there will definitely be some fine tuning when it comes to fitting it in, but I want to get the glass on first and we will fine tune around that. Before we get too carried away. That's an important note. This is the important side, okay, but we're going to want to put a layer of uh, epoxy over the top of this first. Let me go get that. We're not going for aesthetics here, we're going for waterproof. To me, that looks pretty great. Peel ply action going. Beautiful.
Did you give it a nice, close, comfortable shave there? I did. Ah, that's quality work right there. Should we go see if it fits? Yeah. This goes up there. What's your prediction on the number of times we're gonna have to modify this? Three. These little humps need to come off. Juice me. Thank you. Whoa, Hercules. Now we're gonna put our strip. So it's like this. Yeah. So it holds the two together and then we'll put one across the other side the entire way. Chris then used the planer to get that perfect inlay for the joint. Meanwhile, now using some acetone to wipe down and prep so we can tab in this bulkhead. I came to the realization that painting my nails is a total waste of time. Now we need to set it in place. And then we'll tape it in place. Well, it's ugly now, but maybe it'll make it look prettier. Just need to get it out of there because it's getting awfully hot. And this is about to fire off. Epoxy is like a riot. It feeds off each other. But once you hit it all by itself, it's a lot more reasonable. Okay, so that's about right. I'm going to put the tape on, and then we're going to screw in some boards just to make this perfectly flat. Let's go time. Ready. There's a scissor. What a weird way to say that, Chris. It's kind of warm up here and I'm compressing my lungs with my gut. Look at this. Look at our new peel ply. This is just from Joanne Fabrics to get us by until we get another order. It's amazing how much stronger a bond is with this little piece of tape. Can we do a better job that way, bud? Is that possible? This is the problem with epoxy. No matter how careful you are, every pair of scissors is a dangerous tool afterwards because there's all these little spikes coming through. Your arm muscles are like bulging right now. That's because I once thought about going to the gym. So I made these holes oversized so that it will grab this wood and suck it in. Like that, see? This is a good angle. <clears throat> is it? Yeah. You finally got your shot? Yep. And you're not showing people your butt. You're so dogged in your determination. To avoid your butt? Because nobody wants to see that. There. Ooh, isn't that lovely? That's helpful. Oh, good. God, that's so annoying. Now time to secure the other side of the wall. This is super fascinating, this process. Totally. Much like what I did inside, in that it's exactly the same. Only more cumbersome. Mm -hmm. The factor of difficulty has been increased. The key to this technique is to sacrifice your body. Maybe this is why your back hurts. How'd you do? Pretty good. Good. There's some stalactites, but that'll all work out in the wash. This is what bodybuilders put all over themselves to make themselves shiny. They coat themselves in epoxy, so they get the hard body, if you know what I mean. Let's go get cleaned up. That's all we can do for tonight. Stop touching things. Tune in next week for the exciting conclusion. Hey you, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw and you want to keep following along, become a subscriber. Just hit that subscribe button below. This sauce sounds like a pissed off Italian. <laughs>